Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast. Myself and Mr. DT in the building. And uh, he's got a smile on his face because we ain't been losing many games recently. Things nah. ain't been going too badly. Yeah, it's all right. Arsenal on the up. <laughs> Shut up, Robbie. We're on the up. No, we're not on the up. We've just won three games. We're going to win the cup. We're going to win maybe. the cup. Maybe. No, you won't believe us. No. Maybe. Maybe we've just changed competitions. <laughs> That's it. I've always said we're pretty much like a cup side lately. Last few years, anyway. Do you remember when, right? Every Arsenal fan. We ain't won a trophy. The, I, I at least I don't care about the league. <sighs> they used to say. I'm sure I've heard you as well. <laughs> don't even try pinning that one on me, Robbie. Right, I'm not going to pin it on you it. yet until I'll have a look see if I'm finding yeah. the evidence. Of it. I'm but, still waiting for you to find the evidence of me <laughs> slating Shaka all that time ago, and you still haven't. <laughs> but I remember there used to be a lot of Arsenal fans, right? And they used to be saying, I don't care about the league. Every year we're in the league. I don't care about fourth place. It's about winning trophies. We haven't won a trophy for 10 years. We need to win trophies. I'd rather win the League Cup than get in the top four. I'd rather... Now, all of a sudden... I know. Oh, yeah, it's a trophy, but we need to get in the top four. It's the stagnation. That's what it is, Robbie. We always wanted that first trophy to get, um, you know that off our back for so long not winning one that was always the first hurdle but then it's about building on that and we haven't we've stagnated and we've actually declined and gone backwards in 10 years time Robbie you're not going to look back and say about who was in the top four and who challenged that season to come you know runners up what you're going to look at is who won what what the trophies are saying Last three years? Yeah, the FA Cup. Three say, trophies the, in four years? The, the FA Cup. Possibility of winning another the trophy FA Cup. this season? Wigan won it. Europa League? Wigan won it. Huh? Wigan won it. So Tottenham what I'm saying is... When's the last time Tottenham won a trophy? Fuck about Tottenham. No, but when's the last time they won a trophy? Don't talk to me about Tottenham, man. Fuck Tottenham. When's the last time they won care. a trophy? Pochettino's the best manager in the world, apparently. Yeah, where's, where's his trophies? Don't care. Trophies. The what, I'm saying is, trophies. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, the bigger picture... Let's not get into this the again. Trophies, the these. bigger tro- l- Listen, off camera, I can tell you now, this guy's got Wenger out banners and everything. I ain't got no Wenger yeah, out banners. You think I'm like you? Yeah. Listen, this guy, trophies. off camera, I'm telling you, trophies. off camera, this guy wants change at the club. He knows. You can sit there all you like. You want me trophies. to say something juicy. Trophies. Be careful what you wish You want for. something me to Be say something juicy. I'm not so then to, you I'm can turn around to Bray later you and you can go, there we go. That line there, use that in the title. What, what, what's, yeah. You're obsessed with this recently. Yeah, right? I am. I was just saying it the other night as listen, well. You're because, obsessed, You know you? the best thing, right? I ain't got to say nothing. I'm we saying... Beat Milan. I'm, no, we I'm beat be- Milan. We beat Milan, right? I sat there in my interview and I said to you, no negativity. I'm positive. I'm happy. It was a great performance. And you still get Wenger in my title. I'm asking you about Wenger. And I'm saying now, and, I, and this is not no title thing on, you know, or anything. It's... This is a fact. I bet the, you any oh, money on, this on. part of the conversation is the title. <laughs> it's not the title. You. Uh, this, this, is, this is, right, something to be looked at because there's some pe- the people that I sit around, they were making this point the other night at the game, and it's true. Despite what you want to say about Wenger, if he brings another trophy this season, another trophy, right, that will be four trophies in the last five years. Obviously, the league, right? Obviously, the league is what we all want to win. We all want to be challenging for the league, and I understand that. But it's still, you know, in a, in a, in a seasons that you can't win, you know, there's only a few trophies up for grabs. It's still this, be a... I'm going to use this Come on, minute. man. It's still, I'm no. being... I'm being t- no, this no, is no, not no, 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 that's the thing. This is not no... Listen, Robbie, um, like I cover said... Cover to, to hype anything. I'm being serious Robbie, now. Robbie, we've turned... Four trophies in turned, if he won. If, if he listen, wins the listen, Europa listen, League, listen, four listen. in the last five. We've turned into a cup team. And it's not acceptable. We've turned into a cup team. People used to moan about us not winning no, no trophies. No, that's what I'm saying. Robbie, Robbie, it's all about trophies, they said. Robbie, Robbie, it wasn't that. It was about getting that first trophy again. And it's about competing again the bigger picture right don't look at the small picture and go you know we won this this trophy and everything else right you look at the bigger picture over the course of the whole season this season has been a complete and utter shambles disgrace and there's no amount of polyfiller that's going to fill those cracks remember when Chelsea won the Champions League what position did they finish in in the league 
that season. Don't even remember. Seventh. Great. But then what did they win around that as well? But they won the Champions League. But then what did they win? Anybody no, but no, 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 no. But what did they win around it? Did they, did they go backwards the year after? Did they go backwards the year after? Did they go backwards the year after that? No. They went and rectified a Quite problem. Possibly. Even though they won the Champions League, they said, all right, we'll give Di, Di Matteo his chance because he's obviously he's just won us the Champions League. Been a few months, wasn't working out. Get out, new manager in. What happened the following season? Won the league. So they've rectified the problems. We're not. We're just regressing constantly. So backwards, you want to be one of them clubs that just backwards. keep sacked? No. High out sack, high I, I, sack. I, 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 think I was chatting to a Watford fan the other day and he was saying to me, oh, I love our system. Please I don't. Said to him, he was telling me about how many... I was like, look how many managers you've got. Please have don't through. compare Watford to us. No, no, no. Please. But listen, no, I know, but it's but a different were, scenario. No, I don't no, think, no, I don't think we would be like that. Sack, no, sack. but we wouldn't Chelsea, be like that. Higher sack, higher sack. What I'm saying sack. is, I think that in the modern age, the the era of long-serving managers is gone. Right. Period. Even, and that's not down to club sacking. That's even down to a lot of the managers deciding that they want to, you know, spend. Mm. Only a certain amount of time somewhere, and then they're going to move on. Pep Guardiola does it all the time. He was at Barcelona. He said, right, I'm moving on. He went to Bayern Munich. He had a period. He went, I'm moving on. I've got no doubt that very soon he's going to sit there at Man City and go, right, done what I need to do. I'm going to move on. This is the new modern age that we're living in with, with managers now. Some managers them, move on, but a lot of the other teams... Like Chelsea, we use just bigging up Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, they hire, fire, hire, fire, hire, sack, right? And look at them this season. Last season they won the league, brilliant. Everyone mm -hmm. was Finn Conte. Now they want to sack him, right? I mean, is that how you want our club no, to be? Do I you want, want do you I'll... want, do you want in 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 the quest to win, um, you know, the big right, prize, I'll, the I'll, big I'll, prize I'll, which is the league? I'll pull it like not this. Even, yeah. I'm not even talking I'll, about Chelsea. I'll pull, yeah, I'll, let me just finish. All right, go on. Right. Um, in the quest to win the, the league, is that what you're prepared to do? Now? Right. You just you know, you, you get you hire a manager. If he doesn't win it, he's let sacked. me let me ask you this: In the past ten years, we've had Arsene Wenger. In that time, Chelsea have won five league titles, four five, four or five league titles, mm. Champions League, Europa League, FA Cups. Would you swap that for the last ten years of Arsene Wenger? Yeah, of course I would. Well, but there you go. Then you just answered not, but, your question. But I'm asking you. The but question. That's a, no, that but I'm you, saying. No, I'm saying. So is that the way forward? For I us? don't care what way we go forward if we're successful. Do so you don't mind that system of just? No. Nope. Get someone in. If it's not working, get rid. So if someone comes in after Wenger. Not working, get rid. Eight months in, it's not. No, working I'm not out. talking. Sack you, you've got to give them a minimum two seasons. Minimum two seasons. First year. But clubs it, are not even giving that number. Well, even Man City. They gave, Matt, they gave Pep Guardiola a year. They said, all right, you got your first year. There's your squeeze. Yeah, that's where you, you know, find your feet, so to, so to speak. Man City won nothing last year. Not a thing. Look at the difference Pace a year later. Time. Didn't win a thing. Yeah. Spent a lot of money. Yeah, I know. But they waited. A year later, they're about to win the um, Premier League. Got a good chance of winning the Champions League or being there or thereabouts. Competing. That's what it is. They are competing. They got to... So is that the way forward then? I was, I just no, no, I, I genuinely think in this day and age, that's what it is. That, that I, Not so much clubs as well. Like I said, it, it's a mixture. Clubs are very um, trigger happy by, you know, get rid of them, get rid of them. Crystal Palace, prime example, didn't even give the ball any time to really try and change things around. Six games, six defeats, bang, see you, out the door, off you go. Um, and it's because of the business that we're in and because the Premier League is so lucrative. Clubs can't afford mm. to get relegated. They can't afford to be drifting and get caught in that mix and then it ends up going... And there's a difference you know, between us and Chelsea and Manchester City, right, in that those clubs can afford to hire managers, take the loss, hire get players in, the players don't work mm -hmm. out, take the loss, let's move them out. We can't. The way in which we've been, the, the club has been run has always been in a very stable way, mm. right? I know and it's maintained through stability, yeah? So, you know, eventually when Wenger goes and that next person comes in and we start, if we shift to a system where we're hiring and firing every minute, the stability goes out the window because, you know, 
you you got players there that were the other managers, you know, choice, and the new guys having to come in, and you know, you we, say, we, we you, just you can't we that. just can't afford to ship out, you, you know, because the, the the difference is with Guardiola last season, he brought a get keeper in, keeper weren't really delivering, he just is able a keeper that he spent a lot of money on. He's able to go out and buy another keeper mm. for even more money. He, he, defenders who didn't work, he just replaced them. But we, we can't operate like that. No. Uh, we can't operate Maybe like we that. should give the manager less money and put that on players. Because we've got a manager that's on £10 million a year. There's a lot of managers that we could get within world football for probably half that. I heard Allegri's on £3 million Exactly. Here. Now, if you were to turn around to Allegri, for example, and say, here's £5 million a year. You're giving him a two million pound pay rise, and it's half of what Wenger's getting right now. Think about it. The only managers that are on ridiculous amounts of money are in the Premier League. So, like I said, I don't know the ins and outs of what goes on with the finances and stuff like that. But I'm just but saying this hiring and firing thing. This is the modern world. It may world. look great no, but at Chelsea's and clubs like that, but I don't know. It's the modern world. I don't think we could sustain that because Chelsea's not a club that runs on the same sort of model as what Arsenal runs. So I don't think we could sustain just firing a manager every time someone doesn't work out after a season and a bit, he's gone. No, I, oh, we couldn't sustain that. I, I do we could think... actually end up. This is why you get some fans, right, where the ones that support Arsene Wenger. And they make a valid point in this when they say that actually we could go, we could be a lot worse with the system that we have, the system that operates at Arsenal. If somebody else is in there and, you know, they can't keep it stable and then we've got to get rid of him, we may even go backwards even more and not be challenging at all. Nah, don't believe it. <laughs> Honestly, don't. I think Based on what? Based on the fact that I know... Look at, the, look at how the club we've got runs. decent players there, but the manager ain't getting the best out of them. And someone else could. But if the new guy came in, say, and this happens... But it's a chance you take. Big it's reputation and he really, doesn't. We, we could bring Pep Guardiola in and it might not work with us. But That's I'm just, what I'm saying. I'm just it, talking every, about... Every, every sign-in, whether it's managerial or player, is a gamble. You know what it is, right? I was just trying to get my head around the other day about... I was trying to get in Kroenke's head. Good luck. As to, <laughs> and I was trying to say, as to, I'm trying to think as to why, why he he's here keeps, on, why he keeps on Arsene Wenger, right? And that was what I was the conclusion I was coming to. Like I'm like in his head, it's the stability that Wenger brings. I think it's the with money the system, the with the system in which the club operates, which is that they don't go out and spend. Even when they spend big money, it's probably they. If you notice, they've shipped out players to enable them to have that money. It's a self-sustaining mm -hmm. way in which yeah. they do it, right? And I'm inside his head and I'm like, that's why he likes Wenger, because he keeps everything stable. Now, eventually when Wenger goes and the new guy comes in, he's not going to be able to keep it as stable as Wenger's kept it. Would we, with him in charge, end up going backwards? And then would it be true what people have said that all along it hasn't really been Wenger necessarily has been the big problem. It's been the board. No, well, well first, the board uh, first, and strong foremost, enough? first and foremost, we'll find out. And there's only one way we are going to find out. No one knows the answer to it until we see it. That's a fact. No one knows the answer. You can't tell me now we are definitely going to go backwards. And you cannot tell me we're definitely going to go forward. Only time will tell. So, But it'd be the same board. Yeah, it, same yeah, board. The same board that have... Gave Arsene Wenger the players that he's got right They're now. They're giving him enough, though, to win the league. Is right. that enough? Right. Are the players first, there first enough foremost, to win the league? First and foremost, we already know that Arsene Wenger is the one that identifies the players and he's the one who's been doing that. That started to get taken off his hands. That isn't going to happen overnight. I knew that we were not going to go out and rectify all of our problems in January. Impossible. Physically impossible. So we've looked at it and gone, right, let's get these deals done now. And then we go back in the summer and we get the other deals done, which is the defensive side of things. Because I'd say apart from a winger, I'd like to see an out and out winger, you know, like an overmars type player that stays on the touchline. Offensively, we're set. I'm, I'm happy. Ozil, Lacazette, Aubameyang, 
Mkhitaryan. We're set. I've got no problems with that at all. You won't be. Shut up. <laughs> um, I've got no problems with that. Um, it's defensively. Need a new goalkeeper. Need a new centre-back. Need a new right-back. I actually think Bellerin's gone at the end of the season. Genuinely think he's gone. And we should have got one anyway. Because he's literally the Dibucci. only... Dibucci well, look how well he's doing. French player of the, uh, no, the month. month. Yeah, he scored a couple of goals and everything. Yeah. But, so we need a right back um, and we need a DM. So, you know, you look at you that. You need all that, right? We need... Well, so suppose the money's ain't not there to get it. The, the, money's, the money's clearly there. The, money, the money's clearly there. At the end of the day, you wouldn't, be, you bring, you wouldn't be bringing in the likes of um, Raul... I um, can't pronounce his surname, from Barcelona. I'm not pronouncing it. Yeah, you're not trying to do <laughs> But uh, we brought him in, mm. right? This is the guy that's dealt with huge contracts. You know, brought the likes of Neymar and all that to mm. Barcelona and Suarez. And, you know, he got the Suarez deal over the line. We couldn't. He wouldn't have offered a pound. So why can't these guys be there with Wenger? A guy who keeps it stable. Because, because Wenger, in terms of what goes on on the pitch... Is outdated. No, but I'm saying he's, that. He's I'm, te- no, no, no. Because this is the thing. It's not. Wor- it's no good having all these lovely things around you and buying all these lovely players if you can't have a. If you don't have a manager that can't get the best out of those, and he isn't. He hasn't for a long period of time. It's outdated. So, it's like, you know, buying a Ferrari, but not having enough money to run it. But also, you got to have the right players, and 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 if the yeah. board if the board don't give him the finances to buy these players, but like I said, we, or, or we, don't, we, if they don't, we the have, new guy comes in, have, and they don't give him the finances. Yeah, but what I'm league. saying is, it's been less than six months since we've been seeing the backroom changes. It's a challenge for the league. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is, I can see the changes in the backroom. The fact that they brought in Sven, the fact um, Sven is. Regarded as possibly one of the best in his field. We brought in the guy, um, um, is it Josh Fahey mm-hmm. um, from Team Sky? Does all the contract negotiation side of things and finalising with add ons and all that kind of stuff. Who is heavily involved with the Abamyang deal. He's regarded as the best in his field. The guy we got in from Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Experience speaks for itself. He came out and had one of his first interviews. He only started in February, so he's been here a month. Mm. He came out and said that when he spoke to Gazidis about the plan, the future, the people we're looking to get in, he couldn't say no. And it, I'll tell you something, it must be some serious project for him to walk away from Barcelona. You know what I mean? But if, and we will find out whether they are all words or not. Challenge for the league. Look at City and Mars ahead. Yeah, I know that. Not just of us. But everyone. I'm saying, what did I say to you? What did I say to you in other interviews? We're four or five years behind. I said that to you, didn't I? In interviews this so season. Prepared to wait that four years? Well, yeah, because I believe that that's how far we you, have done. Would you have because, fired? Would you have fired no, 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 four no, no, or five managers? No, in that because time? because what what I want to see is a team that's challenging at the top again. Like proper going neck and neck for the titles. That no one's we done were, that this season. No, no one has, right? But when we were doing it with Manchester United, when we were finishing, se- when we were finishing second, I was angry, I was upset, but I weren't going mad at the players, I weren't going mad at Arsene Wenger, I weren't going mad at the board. He's going mad at. I was getting ready for next season because I knew that we would go again, and I knew that we would challenge. And then the following season we go. You know, we threw away... Things have we've, changed. We're, no, 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 but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, Robbie. We need to feel that sense of challenging again. There was no City. Progression. There's no Chelsea. No, I know that. But at the end of no the day, Liverpool. if we get the right... If we get the right people in and the right manager, we can challenge City. We can challenge them. I don't think they'll have such a dominant year Get all the people in, but you've got to have the money as well. But I believe we've got the money there. we definitely got the money there. Easily got the money. Easily. To compete with City? Not in terms of... Chelsea and not their, their in, spending. Well, do you know what? The, the, do you know what the thing is, right? And this is what really pisses me off, right? Is that... Kroenke's got so much money. But he's not spent a penny since he's been here. Right? 
And we that's could. not going to change. That's no, what no. I'm saying. Usman We're the off, here. Usman Off's on the board. Usman we off. could compete with Manchester City could. financially. But I'm yeah, saying no. at the but moment. I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, is that with the right purchases in the defensive area and with the right manager that can set up and get the best out of the team, could we challenge for the title next year? Yeah, we could. Could we? Could, yeah. If we... That, Manchester but, uh, United spent... Was it five hundred million? I think even more. Don't this rate season, Mar- right? Listen, Mourinho, oh, hold on, hold on, Mourinho's hold on, hold on. finished. Mourinho's done. At the done. start of the season, they Mourinho's were the favourite. Everyone said they're the favourites to win the league, done. right? Mourinho's they done. Mourinho's done. They brought in Mourinho to manage it. Mourinho's are done. They, are they challenging? Mourinho's done. They're challenging. Listen. Mourinho's done. And and, so, and spent you say that loads of and money you say as that well. for as bad as but listen, and for as bad as you say Manchester United are under a normal season without Manchester City having this freak season where they're just flying. Manchester United would actually be t- challenging for the but title right now. you've answered your own question. No, you, I know, but I'm about, saying this is a freak season. When you talk about back in the day. This is a freak season. Right, things have changed. No, but like you said, all round. Robbie, this is a freak. Man City are not going to have this same season next year. They're going to lose. Sure, they're yeah. not, they're not, they're not. Because teams will become more wiser to it. Teams will become more, you know, um, clued They're going to spend more money. I know they're going to spend gonna more bring money. In, they're going to bring in even better players on top of but what, what they've already got. what I'm saying is, is that, you know, for whatever, you know, seasons that go on, go on, they could pick up injuries next year. They've been very lucky with certain things. I know they've, they've had got, injuries. They've got an amazing squad. I know they've got an amazing squad. But what so I'm saying, how are you going to compete with all that? All it takes, all it takes, Robbie, is certain things to happen during the season. Everything's fell for them in the Premier League this year. Everything's fallen for them. And it's just gone their way. But at the end of the day, they can be beaten. And yeah. we can challenge. And if we challenge, I, you know, for argument's sake, right? We've got How are you going to challenge them if offensively, you don't We've got offensively what we have, right? Let's say we go out and get a goalkeeper, a centre-back, a right-back, a defensive midfielder, 150 million. Something like that. 150-odd million. We'd have to ship out some of the players we've already got to get that. And? That's what I'm saying. The way in which yeah, the, but no, the no, way no. in which the right. Arsenal model works first and works fo- first is and different. Foremost, first and foremost, first and foremost, we wouldn't have to ship out some of what we got because we no, we wouldn't because we've got that money. Go and look at all the recent reports about well, how much we got. When's the last time you see us spending? No, but oh, listen, listen, we hear listen, reports every year. Listen, the one thing that we've started doing, right, and it isn't going to happen overnight. And I'm me more than anyone is actually the one that's saying just relax and. It's not going to happen overnight because we started shifting out the deadwood. Okay, we started shifting out the players that have been here for long enough and they just ain't doing anything. You feel Walcott, you Francis Cockerlands. Everyone moaned about Olivier Giroud for long enough and then as soon as we get rid of him, they'll start crying. Shut up. He was never going to win us the league. He's gone. Move on. Over and done with. So all these players that that have never gone and take us to another level and they've had long enough to do that, they're going. They're gone. It isn't going to happen overnight. And at the same time, we're bringing players in. Aubameyang, Lacazette, all that kind of stuff. It's... But is it good enough to win the league? No, I'm saying we still need to add to that. We need to go out but there. Are we, gonna be... we need to go out there. We need to go out there and get ourselves a centre-back. Yeah? Under a new like manager. A Bale, right? a new new... Ma- go and get a centre-back. What is he? 50-odd million. Or the guy from Roma. Manolas, what's he? 30, 40 million? Well, let, me, let me give you an example. So, no, wait, me... wait, wait, wait. So I'm going for it, right? Yeah. So you talk... Manolas, uh, Roma, yeah? What What's is he? 30, 30, 40 million? Probably, Kudabale, yeah. about 40 odd million, 50 mm. million or something like that. Yeah, sounds great. So there's that, Brilliant. yeah? Look at the goalkeeper situation. Yeah, how much is the goalkeeper no. going to say? Do you want it? Or black? Depends on it. Who's available? Who would we go Who's... for? Oh, yeah. I'd love him. Or black I'd available? Lo- I'd love All him. All right, so we get or black. Or black? Right, how much yeah. is it? 50 million? Yeah, so there's 100. Okay. So let, let's just say you've identified three players. You're the scout, yeah? So yeah. What's it again? Or black? Yeah. Right, uh, cool. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. All right, all so you right. got you got Old Black, uh, Cooley Barley. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one? Costas Monolas. No, no, no. I said either one of them. All right. You want three or? We look at, well, no, I want a defensive midfielder. Oh, you want a defensive? Who, who do you want for that? Well, I don't know. We could get Inzonzi. Inzonzi, okay, right. Let's, Inzonzi. let's just top my head. Just all right, Inzonzi. How much? 30 million? Something like that. Okay, so you've identified that, you've got all the money in place to buy these players. Yeah, yeah go on. Everything's, <laughs> Come on. Everything's going nice. Yeah, cool. All right, so you go to Cooley Bali and you say, right, Cooley, 
<laughs> That's not his name. <laughs> well, no, is he your boy now? <laughs> Kuri Bali, 50 million, right? You put in a bid for 50 million for Kuri Bali. Mm -hmm. Chelsea come along and say, actually, we'll pay 70 million. Then you so move Kuli, on to another target. So Cooley Barley says, all right, I'm going to Chelsea. Yeah. Right? And then we go Manolas. Wait, wait, wait. And then we go Manolas. Yeah, you go to Manolas. You say, yeah, Manolas. 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 Whatever your name <laughs> what is. You Manolas. <laughs> Manolas. Manolas. 40 million for you. Yeah. City coming and say, actually, we could do it another defender. We put in 70 million for you. Yeah, but Robbie, right? what you're doing, what you're doing, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm making a point. Oh, black, oh, black, oh, oh, black. Yeah, it's 50 million, right? Man United come and say, actually, we're getting 90 million. Yeah, what, right? when so they got the hair? This is what I'm saying When they got to you, the hair? Hold on. All right, not Man United. Behave then. yourself. Not, not Man United, but another club in Europe. Real Madrid coming. We're getting 90 million. When they're coming for this him already? This is what I'm saying. When they're when coming for him already? Right? Money. Yes, but what, what I'm saying is, what you're doing, no, but what you're doing, what you're doing is, right, what? Arsenal ain't going to sit there, right, listen, Arsenal ain't going to go, money, Arsenal ain't going to be sitting here, the people that we've got behind the scenes now are not going to sit there and go, there's your central defender, that's the only one we've got, that's the only one we're after, that is it, they're going to have a list, so they'll have a one, a two, a three, to win they'll the have league. this, they'll have it, and to win the league, you need the best players, right, yeah, Right, especially now, that's what City have done. Do I think? So, hold, hold on, oh. let, me, let me make my point now, because you've done a lot of talking, yeah? To win the league, you need to spend a lot of money, yeah? Whether Wenger's in charge, whether a new guy, or whatever, how many different managers you want to bring in, you need a lot of money to win the league. With the current system of how Arsenal yeah, work, are they going to spend... Money, that's a one-off, like you said, one-offs, right? With oh, the amount so of money... With the amount of money that Arsenal spend on players, right? And as I said, even when they do spend that money, they've got to free it up elsewhere because of the way they run the club, right? Are they going to be able to buy Koulibaly or Oblak or anyone if anybody else comes in and bids a similar amount of money? And we can see from all the leagues across Europe that the teams that spend the most money win the league. Man City are running away with the Premier League, spent the most money. PSG running away with their league, spent the most money, right? Juventus... Spent the most money in Italy, probably going to win the league over there. Barcelona, Real Madrid spend the most money in La Liga, win it every single year. Celtic spend the most yeah, money. Yeah, a fair in, in, a second in La Liga. Celtic spend the most money in, um, in Scotland, going to win the league. Um, oh, behave yourself. Arsenal ladies could win the Scottish League. The team that spends the most money, Bayern Munich spend the most money in Germany, going to win the league. If you don't spend the money, I remember when Hearts came into the Scottish invest, League and started blowing loads big, of money. And if that the didn't right get investment anywhere. is not put in alongside all these changes and stuff like you're talking about, you're not going to win the league. But I'm telling you, I'm the, telling you that I think we will put the right investment in. We know what's there, and the people behind the scenes yeah, well, look yeah. like they're doing the job. So, so, yeah, you those know, guys behind the scenes have changed. Cronky's still there. It's still the same board. They spend the same amount of money that have a same, they've got a certain model. You can see it. Even in the Aubameyang deal the other day, relied on Giroud going one way, um, Alexis going that way. We wouldn't have got because, Aubameyang. Because we we, would, right, we wouldn't have just January, rocked up. Right, that's, we rocked up no, and just said, hey, oh, here's that's 75 January. million for that's Aubameyang. Ja that's January, right? Now, there's a difference between January and the summer and for a start, massive difference because of the funds that are available. Yes, we're going to have, we're going to have, depends what country you go to, <laughs> we're going to have, um, we're going to have more money available in the summer, which is what we've set out. A lot of why we didn't go and get certain players in January was because they said that we we're going to save it until the summer and just go out there and get better quality. Why waste 10 million on Johnny Evans when that 10 million can go towards a Kudubale or a Manolas in the summer. No point wasting it now. Save it. Pull it aside. We go forward. And I look at what the guys do behind the scenes. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. If they've got the right dollars. Yeah. And I believe the that they will. Right. I, you know to what? I'm, I'm looking at things that are going on at the moment. I see that Josh Cronkey's over here for the next three months. And, um, oh, lovely. and I see that, no, because he's obviously, at the end of the day, we moan about him not ever being here. But at least one of them's actually taking an interest in seeing what's actually going on. I'd rather that. I'd rather him here for the next three yeah. months to see hands on what's happening. We moan that they're never here. So let's not moan that one of them is. Yeah, Stan might not be here. 
but he specifically sent his son over and said, right, I want you to get the ins and outs of that club. I want you to really... So, fair play to him. He's over here for the next three months. Let's see if he's got a pair of balls and what he does about it. And all the murmurs and things that you're hearing behind the scenes are positive. Okay. But proof is in the pudding. So, I'm not going to get carried away and I'm not going to go, yes, we won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I see it. So, you think if we replace Wenger... And go and sort out make those, those areas, changes, Then we could challenge. We'll challenge. I really do think we could because we've got a strong enough... Could we win the league? That's another matter. Like I said, winning the league takes luck. Winning the league takes luck. Even when we, won, even, have, even when we won titles. I'm just going back to the point I was making at the start of the season because it then could be, because things are unstable and that, that we don't even win trophies no more. At least we've had a few trophies and things like that. Like I said, if but maybe. No one will know until... No one knows the future. Unless you're Martin McFly. So for you, it's about stepping out of the comfort zone. Yeah. And How many players have you seen leave Arsenal and say, I had to get out of the comfort zone? They're all doing it because everything is comfortable. And, and that's the thing. Be, embrace the future. Don't be scared of it. Don't be scared. I remember when... And you won't be on no banners for the new manager. No, of course not. I hope, I hope Allegri comes in because I'll be an AKB then. <laughs> Allegri knows best. <laughs> know what I mean? I'll go from a WOB to an AKB. <laughs> Just like, yeah, we can swap banners with each other. Do you know what? I wanted to ask you this, right? On boards at the moment, mm. I don't know if you saw this, you would have seen it. The stuff at West Ham the other day. Yeah. Which was, wow. Those fans, they turned on the board and mm. they rounded on them after that Burnley game. They had to, the, the board members, Sullivan Gold, Karen Brady, they had to be escorted out of the yeah. ground. It's funny because you're looking at it. The only person who was able to stay there was Trevor, Trevor Booking. Booking. He was just because, sitting there. Do, do, do you know what? Do you know what? You said it perfectly then, right? Trevor Brooking is like Arsene Wenger, right? In terms of the fans, a lot of fans will not disrespect him and have got that loyalty towards him and everything else. All right, so that's why no West Ham fan's going to go at Trevor Brookin. But it got ugly, didn't it? it yeah, it, it got very ugly. Now, now do you do you some of the do you agree with what they did? Do you know what? As a person yourself, that's been at the I, I think the forefront the, of many protests. I you think, know, fans running on the pitch. I think the running to be tackled on the by players. I think the, fans trying to plant a flag. That's a new one for you. Yeah, trying to plant a flag. No banners. Trying no, to plant a, the corner flag in the middle of the pitch. Did you, 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 know did you what? agree with it? I think that there's a way of doing things. I understand their frustration because I'm frustrated. Now, they must be 10 times frustrated than us because, you know, with all due respect, West Ham are not a big club. They've never been a big club. They're promising they're going to be a big club. No, I know, but they've never won the league, you know. And the levels that we are as a club and the level West Ham are as a club are completely contrasting. But... What is equal is the love you have for your club. Mm. We love Arsenal. West Ham fans love West Ham. There's no difference. There's no comparison in, in that side of things. And when you're not getting listened to, when you're not being, you know, when they're not doing the things that they're promising, that love ends up spo- spilling over. And that ends up, you're so frustrated, you're so angry. I don't agree with the fans running on the pitch. Simple reason being is that they're the ones who's going to lose out now because they're the ones who's going to get the banning orders. They're the ones who's going to probably be banned for life. So if it does end up turning around at West Ham, you know, Sullivan and Gold decide to sell on, a big investor comes in and West Ham start moving up the table and winning trophies, they're going to lose out. They're going to miss out. So in that side of things, I think you're cutting off your nose to spite How your face. How do you protest then? Well, this is the thing. That's it's, the thing is like, they're so the only way you can The only way you can protest is the way that we protested. Yeah, that's done and a lot. I know it hasn't done a lot, but that's the, <laughs> but that's the way you get your voice across. They got their voice across no, because not, they, the board had to, they had to retreat. I've never yeah, seen nothing like it. But, they had to, but what they I'm had saying to remove is, them. But they, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, if West Ham had an Arsene Wenger who had been there for 20 odd years and done what you know, Wenger did in them early years and stuff. West Ham fans won't be going for him. Do you think if Kroenke came to every... Because whatever you say about Sullivan and Gold, they're at every yeah. game, home and away. Kroenke get, would get exactly if, the same. Do you think he would have got the 100%, same? 100%. Because Arsenal fans have no loyalty to Stan Kroenke. 
Arsenal fans are very reserved and very wary of going for Wenger because of how long he's been here. And the well, loyalty respect for him, don't and, and that side of yeah. things. So many fans I've spoken to, even the most ardent of, you know, Wenger in, have said, it's time to go. He does have to go. But I won't protest. I won't pull out balance. I won't, you know, go that extra step because I just can't do it. You know, maybe if he stays here for a few more years and things keep going the way they are, that might tip them over the edge. Because I used to be where they were. I would never pull out banners. I would never go that extra mile. But then he kept staying and kept staying and I kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed till I dropped and I tipped over the edge. And I went, no, 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 I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. If he's not respecting us, why should I respect him? And that's the way I look at it. You know, last season when it was all going wrong and he blamed us as fans for it all going wrong. Yet at the end of the season, he then admits that him not being clear about his future actually had an effect on the players. So it weren't the fans all along, it was you. But yet when the going got tough in the middle of the season, you threw the blame on us. Don't do that. So if you've got no respect for us, I've got no respect for you. So you've got people at that, them levels, mm. you know, different, different things. West Ham, they've got no ties, no love or no, you know, for any one of those. Not the board, not David Moyes, none of them. So they could go for any single one of them. Any single one of them they could go for. And if Stan Kroenke was coming to Arsenal every single week, imagine Stan Kroenke at Swansea, Brighton. You tell me the fans wouldn't have been going mad and going for him. Of course they would have. And the one thing Is it right to do that though? Would you know what? It didn't look very nice. No, it didn't look nice, but if you're not being listened to, if you're not being listened to, I I you know, we've got mates at West Ham. And, you know, there was the big protest planned and then Sullivan and everyone got the people involved and called them in for meetings and stuff like that, try and dampen the fires and stop the protests and that kind of stuff. We ain't even had none of that. You know, we go to AGMs and we get Chips Keswick and that shooing us off. Do you know what I mean? They get meetings and, you know, whatever's happened and then the protest is getting cancelled and there's this and that. And then that result comes in and then all of a sudden it's just boiling over again. And it's just, they just, if fans are not being listened to, you know, and they've been made promises, West Ham, you know, they were made to leave their home. Leave your home, leave Upton Park. None of this boiling or anything. To me, that's Upton Park. That's where I was growing up. That's what I know it as, Upton mm. Park. One of the best grounds you can go to for atmosphere. I used to love going to Upton Park, night time. Unbelievable atmosphere. And um, they were told to... I can't remember running down the road a few times. <laughs> down Green well. Street. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, and it was... They were told to up sticks, get out of there. And it's not like with us where they've crossed the road. They've actually had to up sticks, go to a stadium that's not a football stadium. We've been there. It's awful. It... You can't create an atmosphere it's in there. It's a nice stadium, man. No, oh, yeah, it looks nice. Maybe if Mo Farrell was running around it. <laughs> but it's not a football stadium. It's a, Come it's, on. Come on, Robbie. It's not a football it's stadium. Not, it's not. Football it's not. Stadium. And it's not their home. And, no, they've been, and they've been lied to. But sometimes, you know what it is? If, you, if you're not winning. Yes, it makes things bad. But it's not. We've grown to get into the Emirates. And I know it's still not home to a lot of us. It's still not hybrid. It doesn't have that feel and it's very corporate now and it's soulless, so we say, compared to hybrid and the things that we did in there. But we've grown to accept that that's our stadium. That will outlive us, you know. That will go down to our children's 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 and, you know, in 100 odd years time, that will be there. We won't be. And um, it's, it's funny, actually, it's like it sort of opens a whole debate about how do you protest? Because I've, I've seen a lot of protests recently. I was, yeah. there, there was one the other day over in Germany where basically the Dortmund fans just didn't turn up. So yeah. that was for a Monday night game. That's probably game the best. Where they're protesting about a Monday night game. And normally Dortmund, you'd be like 80,000 fans. That's probably the best. In that game, there was about 30,000 yeah. down. Hit, right? so hit them in the pocket. Hit them in the pocket. So there's that not turning up. 
you got like uh, some of the, uh, the, I think it was, uh, there was another Bundesliga team complaining about that Monday night football and they just t- came to the game. They had loads and loads of tennis balls and they just threw them all on the pitch. Yeah. And the game got delayed for ages. Um, there was one in I've France, in, one in France last week where the, the fans all run on the pitch to go after the players at the end of the game. Was no, that, no, there was one in Greece. Where no, no, not that one. I ain't even got to that yet. Greece with him. Where the owner, the owner, the right, the, his gun. yeah, he, no, that was. the owner went on the pitch with his gun and he had his hand. No, well, that could be that could be crunky. No, you know I mean, you come around, man's coming he looking for Arsenal fans. Who's that guy with a banner? Boom, boom, boom. No, I mean, he fires a few shots. I will forget as well. He's American, man. He's probably yeah. got a license for them. No, I mean, he's probably got a lot of guns. Listen, <coughs> he's remind a member me, of the NRA, mate. He remind me, with his, he remind me when we're on tour in America. I'm not going because he's got free license to shoot them things, man. You know what well, I mean? You know what I mean? There's been so many different, um, you know, and then you even got like some of these countries where you get the ultras. They'll just turn up at the training ground yeah. and say to the, say to the well, players, yeah, what were you lot doing? What, what was that last week? They, countries like Turkey and that, they yeah, don't miss what, them what, out. Um, when we went to uh, Serbia, mm. the ultras at uh, um, Red Star, they got their own keys to the stadium. Yeah, that's what a guy was saying. You know, imagine us having keys to the Emirates. <laughs> right, not happy, open up, right, let's go in, right, let's go and sort this out. Do you know what I mean? Wow, that's... Yeah, that's but why... how do you protest? Do you know what? It just depends what country you're in and what culture you're from. And everyone has different ways of doing it. I think the best way is probably by not turning up and you hit them in the pocket. Mm. Um, well, I, fans have been doing that this season. They've awesome. been doing that this season. And it's... Um, is it working? Do you know what? We'll, we'll see by the summer because whether they want to change that because the empty seats is embarrassing at the Emirates. We may as well stay at Highbury. But then I mean? again, are they affected by that? Because they've already paid. Well, those empty seats, well, those empty seats are always season ticket holders. Well, they just say, I can't not, be asking going. Not go all in. season ticket holders. Mainly, because not if all. you look at the areas where you've got the general sale, like um, in a clock end and that, then they're still packed. But, so, but what the, I'm the, saying the, is... They've it's, already got the money. Well, so they don't really care Well, this either. is the thing, right? Is that I think it is having an effect because the players are now having to start talking about it. So this is how you know it's having an effect. Mkhitaryan made comments about it um, after we beat Watford and said about the fans staying away and whatnot. Um, Ramsey mentioned it before the Milan game and said that he hopes that we can start filling the stadium again. And it's down to them to... Wenger commented on it as well. That's what I mean. So it's having an effect Mm. because people are talking about it now. You know, so... And at the end of the day, maybe that's one of the reasons why Josh Kroenke's here as well because... You know, if he's sitting there in that stadium and he's looking around and thinking, bloody hell, it's not because the ad- they might get the money at that time because they've got the season mm. tickets, but it could have a knock on effect with sponsorships. Josh no, Kroenke's here. No, 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 because it, this, this, this is the thing, Robbie, don't take the piss out of it because Josh, like I've told you, we moan that they're never here. And when one of them's actually showing a bit and coming over just to see what's actually going on, at least let him do that. You know, for me, though, it's not just about him coming here. No, it ain't. It's about you coming here and engaging with the fans. Uh, it's not... Uh, when, when we talk... When, for me, when I moan about not seeing the Cronkies in the stadium, right, it's not just about your presence being in a game, watching a game. Yeah, that's obviously... You own, some, you own a club, and if you love it, you should be here watching it. That's one part of it. Mm-hmm. But also, I want to see you engaging with the fans. I want to see you telling us, you know, telling us what you aim to be doing with this club what is you know i want to see you addressing issues when the club is going for a rough time yeah shouldn't always be venga no no no, 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 no i know that i know that has to come out and said is josh come out and said and showed any either either showed support for venga or if he doesn't support venga said something that no you need to buck up or we're going to change you i i do do any of those board members are any of them making any difficult decisions i I do think that arsenal are very behind closed doors with everything that they do yeah but it ain't Um, working is it no 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 no, but this is what i'm saying but but this is what i'm saying at the end of the day we're going to know more in the summer we're going to know more in the summer i want to know some things now yeah i know one thing i want to know now is Wenger's situation we're at a perfect time right now. Yeah, We've got you know, two and a half right, weeks off. Right, so yeah, Josh Cronk is over here. Yeah, 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 but what I'm saying he is... He could be over here seeing a girlfriend. He uh, could be over here... Shut up. Well, he's, what's no, he, no, no, I know, but he's listen. He's over here. No, what's I he know, doing? I know he's over here, but we don't know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, you're over here and what? So what I want to see, what I want to see now, 
is in the next two and a half weeks, I want Wenger's position clarified. I want that done. Clarified. Well, they probably won't clarify it. Well, that means that they're not doing their job properly and they're bottling it. And it's as simple as that. Because, I, 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 because I want to see... I think if we've got the best chance of winning the Europa League is for Wenger to come out and say that he's walking at the end of this season and everyone gets behind him for is one he, big swan is, song. Is he, he going to say that? He's, he's now got something to aim at that keeps him... That keeps the wolves off, really, isn't it? In, 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 no, in, I don't. Do you know what? This argument can go on. Even you over said earlier. Even, yeah, even, even, even you said. Even you said earlier. Even you said earlier. Even you said earlier. Even you said earlier that you're not even care about the league no more. Even if Burnley come and they got sixth place, you wouldn't care, right? No. So if he suffers a couple of losses, you ain't really going to be on his case. It's no, all on. But, it's all on the no. Europa League now, yeah. But so he could, he's going to look on that and say, well, I ain't saying nothing. But, Until at least after I get knocked but out. But what you've got to remember is, is that the, f- the fan base is still fractious. The fan base is still divided. The fan base is still on edge. When Milan scored that goal last night, you felt everything around you. And just this is go, where I want to see your Josh Cronkies and people like that. Not just sitting there or whatever, being here. I want to see him coming out and engaging with the fans, showing us that he's hurting as well mm-hmm. from the, the lack of performances this season showing us that he and also the other board members care. You know, I think well, I've met, didn't, I've didn't, met, didn't, I've met Gazidis a couple of... Didn't I've Josh, met, let me just, let's just finish Josh here. actually said something last week. Something, he actually came out with something last week and it was that um, the decision on what we do regarding Wenger mm-hmm. will no longer be a... Um, what's the word? You know, like... Um, there's no emotion involved yeah. in it. Who do you say that to? Well, it's all over the press. Yeah. Mm. So I'll say one thing with Gazidis, right? Every time I've met I saw him during the week, actually, at the, the ladies' final. Oh, you right? see him in the week, yeah? Yeah. yeah he, gave him a ring. My was, boy. I <laughs> no, no, I saw him there. I had a little chat with him. It was a brief chat. Yeah? What did you say? Huh? What did you say? No, I just said to him that the ladies played. They, 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 they won the they won the cup, didn't they? they so you the met I, Ivan Gazidis and you talked about the ladies. Listen, I just met him briefly. No, no, no. So you blatantly sat there and said, "Listen." No, no I, didn't, I, I, I didn't sit there. I saw him. I was coming into the I was coming into the ground and I saw him. And he come over, shook my hand, and said, "How's everything?" I said, "Fine." And then I saw him at the end of the game and I said to him, "I said that was a great performance by the ladies, right?" <laughs> and he did. He was quite funny actually. He ran a joke and he goes, "Robbie." The trophies keep coming rolling in. Right? And I was going, yeah, I go rolling in. I said, I want to see the Europa League come rolling in. And he just laughed, right? But to be fair to him, when I have had a chance to talk to him, he does seem to me, despite, I know he gets a lot of criticism, he seems like he cares. I really do get that impression mm. that that guy does care about the club. But I want to see these guys. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Up. I want to see it. But what I'm saying I is, see I want to see him. I, I think you're I too pally see, with him. I want to see. I ain't too pally with you him. You are, right? man. I've, I reckon. I've, it, I reckon I've only seen. I've seen the guy about. Nah, I've man. I've met the guy about two, three times in about the there's last. There's like years. this, this little connection, man. It's like bald people all stay together. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all it is. It's like you know, in football, they they say you have a strikers well, union. Well, you got too much hearing. You have a goalkeepers union and stuff. I reckon there's a bald man union. All seriousness, I want to see him. I want to see Josh Kroenke. I don't want to just see these guys turning up. Oh, they were there. So what if they're there? I want to. I want to yeah, hear them. No, that's what I, I want, want them see. to engage. I yeah. don't want to hear just. Oh, I read somewhere that Josh said. And this why weekend, can't he? Why can't weekend, he address people why can't, I, on behalf of his dad and say this is what the vision right. like? Like what those guys asked him about that time when, when ask him, ask his him, dad ask when his him. dad was at the meeting and they, and they said, "What's your vision?" Well, that's not a. Ask that's him, not a horrible ask question. Fan TV. I would <laughs> love them to come on. I've asked Could you them. imagine that? My God. I've asked, I've asked them before to come on, Arsenal Fan TV. Not Josh Kroenke. I've asked for Gazidis to come on before. But you, when you rang him. Right? So, yo, no, Ivan. When I, when, I saw, when I saw him, I said, why don't you come on? Man, They're reluctant it. to come on. They're Scared. reluctant to come on. Right? I'm like, Shook. come on. I, this, for me, it would be, for me, they could, uh, and this is why I really don't understand sometimes the, the, the people who run this club. Now, they could come on Arsenal Fan TV and address the fans. If not Arsenal Fan TV, they could go on Ask Blog or, some, or, or any of those or my different channel. platforms. <laughs> no, I don't think they'll come on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> that would be brilliant. That would, actually, that. that would actually be awesome. 
Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> Look who I'm with. <laughs> Oi, Baldy, how much money are you giving us this summer? <laughs> <laughs> Go out and get the transfers done now. <laughs> and then you've got troops in the background behind the camera. Yeah, you ham roll. Yo, blood, blood. I think now we know why they're not coming nowhere near this channel. Was, but um, listen, there's, there's many other platforms even they could go on and address the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why? Well, just, this, the, the way of running that, that they've used to run the club in the past... That's dead now. Yeah. Well, this is the age of communication. You've got to, you've got to communicate. So like that's said, what I'm saying. Josh being here, great you're here. No. I'm watching a few games for the next couple months. Well, I want to hear from you. What's yeah. the vision? We'll see. We'll see. What's what the happens. vision going let's, forward? Let's see what happens. I want to. You know, a lot of people are talking. This weekend's going to be when Denga makes an announcement. Yeah, right. Let's find out. We'll find out. You know what? I was even going to in this pod. We come to the end of the podcast now, and I was going to ask you um, about. The Danny Welbeck was that a dive or not? Um, do you know just what? quickly, if you've been if you've been watching Danny Welbeck all season, you'll realise that's his natural movement because he just falls over his own feet. <laughs> 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 so he just fell over. It wasn't a dive. Yeah, he was trying to have a shot and he tripped you know, over himself. I actually, yeah. I actually, I actually watched it back, and I don't think. Oh no. It's a blatant dive. Oh no, you're going to get crucified. No, in no, the no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that I don't think it was a. It was a. It was actually. It was a dive. It was a. <laughs> I, I don't know. How, you know what? A, fa a fan said to me when I was interviewing him, right? And he said it wasn't a dive. It was a half dive. And I was like, I started killing myself with was laughter. His name Ty? I started killing myself with laughter. But I can kind of see where he's coming from because I don't think he did. He blatantly looked for it. He kind of went over. Well, yeah, and then he, he sort of turned around and went. He didn't go, he didn't jump up and sort of, he just sort of turned I, around. I, I think that he the, turned around and asked a question. I can't think what defender it was, but I think he might have breathed on him. <laughs> and literally, it was that a dive. Is, it was I don't like bad. it though. It was th that bad. The only thing that I, I've got no problem with the papers, the media, you know, all the pundits and ex players coming out and condemning Danny Welbeck because it was wrong. It was a dive. So AC a, Milan players dived yeah, a couple of times um, in that game before that as well, by the way. But it was crucial. They'd just gone 1 0 up. Yeah. Um, and it effectively swung the game back into our favour. So it was a big moment. Um, but what I do have exception to is that if you're going to call out Danny Welbeck, if you're going to write all these headlines in the papers saying about it's a disgrace to English football, etc., etc., then do the same over fucking Deli Alley and Harry Kane when they dive, especially Deli Alley. Every single fucking week. To week. be fair, they have called him out, Deli Alley. Oh, it took a long time for Gary Lineker to even say anything about him. Mm. As soon as Welbeck yeah, died, for Tottenham, didn't he? Jesus Christ, I don't think Welbeck had even took the penalty and mm. fucking Gary Lineker called was it. tweeting. What did he say? Felbeck. Felbeck. <laughs> that, that was, was pretty uh, funny. Decent for him. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? At the Danny end of <laughs> Felbeck. He was camera man laughing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a good but one. At Danny the end of the day, back. you know, it took him long enough to condemn <laughs> Deli Ali. Danny Felbeck. Danny Felbeck <laughs> fell over his own feet. But. Oh, it is a dive. I, I hate diving, man. No, it's a dive. I, I, will never, I will never change my mind on it. I don't like it. No, it's a dive. And it was ironic because Wenger's been complaining about diving, saying how yeah. English players now are Now he's got to go it. and... Um, but he was right. English yeah, players are well, yeah. but he's English. Now he's he's mastered it as well. he's got to go and answer it, isn't he? So. But then to be in that game, a couple of AC Milan players have gone over. One got booked for diving, remember? In the I don't game know whether well. they can um, go back and look at it retrospectively like they do in the Premier League in Europe. I'm not sure. Mm. There was the funny thing is there was contact, so it's, I'm just trying to get him suspended. This, this is the thing that I'm, they, I'm he, trying to make sure he's not playing in the next game. <laughs> well, see, well, okay, well, but it was no, he was good. He was good. The two legs against AC like, Milan, who was our best player. He, he was. He, he done really well, and um, yeah, he proved me wrong over his performance. Um, but yeah, he dived. And it's off to Moscow. Mate, get the gas masks and. Chemical uh, suits ready. Don't don't um, <laughs> don't have any don't have any cups of tea. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. I find out next week if I can go. Obviously, we will you be going out. to a Zizi's pizza? Zizi. Oh. Oh, Jesus, it's like because I, I already spoke to you and I said to you, I said I needed the second leg to be first mm. and not second because I have my operation a couple of days before the second leg, um, and I go for my pre-op next week. And then that's when they give me the confirmation of that the date is set. Mm. Um, so, you know, unless they move it, or I move it, 
accidentally. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I can't. I can't hold mm. it off any longer. But unless they move it, then, um, you know, and they have already nudged it a bit already. Because mm. I got a letter the other day and they spoke to me and I was meant to be going in at 7 a.m., which is the usual thing. You go in 7 a.m., get yourself all gowned up and all that rubbish. And then you're ready to go down to theatre and they've moved it from 7 till midday. Mm. So maybe there's a few little, <laughs> you know what I mean, shortages and, you know, maybe they can move it to just pass the, NH, the game. NH, NHS probably be next year. You know, you know <laughs> but no, they, they, they put me on as critical and it needs to be done anyway. So, okay. um, but the one thing this I did complain, I did have more a word important of than a game of football. Because mate. the night before you go in for your operation, you've got to stop eating at midnight. Um, and the only thing you're allowed to have until six in the morning is water, tea, coffee, um, black coffee. Um, and then you go in obviously at mm. seven. And I was like, you moved me till 12. I think I've gone 12 hours without food. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I didn't get like this from eating nothing. Everyone <laughs> wants to call me fat. How can I go 12 hours without eating? So I'm hoping they just move me mm. along. When I went in for one of my first operations actually, um, same operation a few years back. They um, they turned around and said to me I was nil by mouth, and I was like, Nah, I can't do that shit, man. And um, when my mum used to come up and visit me, I used to get her to bring me food in. <laughs> and she always used to sneak me food in, sandwiches, all sorts, man. I was eating it, and they clocked me and they found out. So they turned around and said to me that um, yeah, we're gonna have to feed you. Um, like, like by herself and they put like a chew through my nose that went down the back of my mm. throat and into my stomach yeah. and um, that weren't doing no good man so I got my mum to bring me up smaller pieces of food <laughs> and I used to eat it down the side of the tube in my mouth. I love my food man man's got to eat well, listen, good luck with that. Good luck with that. I think you get a card from Josh Cronkey and um, Yeah, Arson. Arson. Arson might send you a no, card. I might write to him and say, Get well like, soon. I, I mean Not. hospital. <laughs> I mean, Arson would be outside the hospital with a banner. <laughs> DT out. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you'll be all right, man. No, nah, man, listen, good. thanks. Um, thanks for watching the podcast. No game for two weeks. What's going on, man? I know. I'm what going we... on holiday. You ain't going on holiday because we're going to be back next week doing a podcast. I don't care. I'm fitting it in between. I'm going on holiday. I'm right, going I'm away coming. for three, four days. I'm having Is a break. It? I'm going somewhere hot. Man's getting a tan. You think I'm joking? I've never seen you with a tan. See me at the start of the season. Go look at my videos. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week. You going to New York? No, nah, man. I'm, I'm staying here, man. Nah. <laughs> We're giving you a chance to be on Arsenal Fan TV and give your opinion after the game. All you've got to do is WhatsApp your video and hold the camera like this. Send it straight after.